In this edition, I get out to Pickering and visit the Monitoring and Diagnostic Centre where we're in the process of transforming the way that we identify the work that needs to get done in our units. This is the M&D Centre? What, what is that? What is the Monitoring and Diagnostic Centre, uh, the M&D Centre, uh, was established in 2017. It's a fleet-wide initiative that was launched um, and our purpose is to help identify any adverse trends, anomalies that we see before these anomalies become an issue. Right, so what you're picking up, the subtle shifts away from the normal that don't actually necessarily reach an alarm level, but can allow us to take action before something gets too bad. Absolutely. Okay. In your opinion, what's the most important piece of instrumentation we we need or would like to add into the field that would really up our game versus what's there now? I would say the uh, vibration monitoring and uh, air. On control. the runner? On the runner, on the exciter. Uh, Anything that moves. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that spins. <laughs> so I'm one of the analysts at the M&D Center and currently I'm working on the thermal performance project of so the secondary sites of Pickering B and all four units of Darlington. Okay. We have a team, mm -hmm. and I think in performance and testing, that comes in and does our like turbine heat rate and right. ba uh, heat balancing mm -hmm. type of testing. Mm -hmm. So will this capability sort of be like an online yeah. efficiency monitoring thing? So currently we are not monitoring in real time. We have gaps in our instrumentation. Right. So, so a lot of times there are delays to identify there's an issue, but with this software, we will be doing it in real time. Heat rates is conversion. That's Absolutely. that's dollars and megawatts. Dollars. Exactly. exactly. Oh, excellent. So uh, what do you do here in the M&D Center? Uh, so I'm an analyst in the M&D Center coming from a background in uh, performance engineering uh, at Darlington. Our safety systems typically have triplicated sensors. So we can take advantage of that and monitor for a calibration of each of those and then identify in real time when one of them starts to drift. Oh. We looked at you know a 10 year history of over 5,000 of, of these PM or preventive maintenance calibration results and found there's just about 1% of them actually needed any. 1% of them actually needed to be done. You can save a lot of maintenance resources to divert to actual corrective. Higher value. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, that's fantastic. So, uh, so we're at the leading edge. Yeah. How does it feel to be on the leading edge? That's pretty cool. I'm data scientist and monitoring and diagnostic. I'm data research. scientist? Wow, that sounds fancy. <laughs> <laughs> what we're doing here is looking at the large role of data we have and uh, constantly trying to just uh, extract more and more insight. Yeah. Uh, the framework is to have five different models for each unit. Uh, Niagara uh, is completed now. We've uh, uh, developed uh, um, 150 models. So we have 150 models just at Niagara? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's so a lot that of models. Includes, yeah, it is. So uh, what do you do here in the M&D Center? Um, so I'm an analyst here at the M&D Center. Um, my previous background is from station chemistry. Oh, I'm a, that's my background. Here. So how, walk, how do walk, you build walk, a model? Walk you through how to actually build a model. Great. Um, so essentially when we scoped out the models, we pull in all the relevant tags that we think would have a relationship together. Um, and so then we would kind of look through the, the tags. There is a spot where we can do a correlation between the two looking oh. at trending them against each other to kind of see what kind of relationship they have. You select the set of data that you wanted and it'll... And you just created a model just, just like, just like model. that? Yeah, pretty much. Man, you're good. <laughs> I come from Pickering Nuclear. I was a component engineer before I came here. Okay, that's a good background for this. Definitely. So I was thinking I was going to show you a couple of our shared wins that we've had. Shared wins, yes. Yeah. We like shared wins. What we're going to look at here to start is Pickering Unit 7, Emergency Low Pressure Service Water Pump 3. They overhauled the motor. So it should be looking pretty good. Yes. And so it started up again, and it looked pretty good. And then what we saw, and there was an alarm here, so it would have been shaded yellow, is we saw about 15 degrees Celsius decrease in our lower guide bearing And when you say alarm in this case, it's a your alarm. So did you call Granville directly on this one? or? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I rung him up. We got my little bat phone for, for Sean. No, no we went to um, we went to our, our motor SME on site. Um, anyone that's worked at Pickering knows Derek Mitchell and how much he's involved on all of these motors. Yeah. So the only way I could see this being a decrease in temperature is uh, the, pack, the packing on the actual pump is coming loose and the cool lake water is pouring down the motor and oh. hitting the bearing. Is this a, an indicator this could be bad soon if we don't jump on top of this? Exactly. This exactly. is the calm before the storm. Exactly. So, so the engineer um, walked it down with Derek's hypothesis in mind and this is what we saw. It's a bit hard to see, but you can see all the water. I can see water coming out of that. Yeah. That's not good. No. Oh, well, good on Derek. The next ship. They the tighten the packing? They tighten the packing. Boom, back yeah, in business. People are thinking of us as someone that, as people that can solve that problem, right? That's huge. Right? Like, yeah. 
previously operations probably would have just asked their engineer or maybe other operators. Yeah, yeah. No, the fact that it's getting through to the big organization that there is a resource like this that could be leveraged. Yes. As you've been out talking to the other works center managers on on this, like, what what's their reaction been? So, I have spent most of my career in maintenance. You know, and a lot of it it was been time based maintenance, and a lot of the managers now see the value. Now I can maybe shift my audience from a one year or two year to a three year or four. Well, that's huge. So our, our trade staff who might see that and say, okay, well, we used to do that job every year and now they want to stretch it out. They might be thinking, well, we're lowering our standards on how we maintain our, our assets. So how, how have we been communicating to our trade staff? So when we start changing the frequency, there's some feeling out there that we don't want to maintain our equipment. That's not true. We want our E4, our force outage rate, to go down. Exactly. So we want to be able to say, you need to go change the oil now before that yeah. engine fails. Yes. So we yes. want to give you better tools to do the work at the right time. Right it's all now, about the right work at the right time. The right work at the right time. The M&D Center is a, a mix. If you want to talk about one OPG, it's probably the best example we have. So of all the analysts in there, there's six. It's kind of 50-50. Um, but they all work together on everything. Right? How do I get a hold of you guys? Yeah, so good question. We've got uh, an inbox. It's uh, mnd at opg.com. Might be mnd inbox at opg.com. <laughs> anyway, it's there. <laughs> There's definitely an inbox. So if you have something that you want to look at or you want to help you with or, or have a better understanding of, you can, you can access it. Um, Prism is available to every employee, in fact, right? So anybody wants to go in and kind of tinker with it, you can't break it. Wow, what a team. Small but mighty, and raising our game to take advantage of all the data we have to make smart decisions. Thanks for an excellent day.